Many of you already know my amazing bearded dragon Falcor, and a few months ago I started including Falcor in the intro to some of my videos. Although it's an awful way to start the new year, it's only fair that I let you guys know. In December, Falcor's health rapidly deteriorated and he unfortunately passed away. He's gone, but not forgotten. This video is dedicated to him. We covered Banjo-Kazooie glitches a year ago, and two glitches last month. It's finally time to tackle the worst game in the Banjo-Kazooie series. Here are some glitches in Banjo-Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts. First, a quick introduction. This game has vehicles that you build LEGO style. As such, the Baron Bird no longer have all their cool moves that they learned in the first two games. To make up for this, Kazooie was given a magical wrench, which can, among other things, lift objects. In Shodan Town, the main hub, you can use Kazooie's wrench to fly. Just take an object, preferably something nice and flat like a bench, and set it on your trolley. Normally you're not allowed, but if you're on the bench, the game incorrectly allows you to lift the trolley while standing on top of it. That means the sky is the limit, or more accurately, the invisible barrier in the sky. This can be used to go anywhere in Shodan Town whenever you want, and collect hard to reach mumble crates early. Unfortunately, some of those crates are locked behind laser walls, and flying won't do much for those. Luckily, there's another glitch that can be used to get those poor crates out of their jail cells. Flip the trolley onto its side and push it so its tray is against the laser wall. Grab the box and move it as close to the tray as possible and enter a level. When you exit, the box should be on the trolley, freed from its laser prison. This is because the game incorrectly believes the box to be on the trolley, and when Shodan Town is reloaded, the trolley is placed upright in an open space, box and all. Now for banjo physics, whenever you jump on a slippery surface, Banjo will slide down it while screaming his head off. The game will keep Banjo sliding until he touches a non-slippery surface. The angle of the slippery surface doesn't actually matter, just Banjo's initial direction. That means that you can slip up slopes like so. Rather than go through the game and show you all the various places you could do this, why not cut out the middleman and just listen to Banjo sliding in place forever? There we go. Still in Showdown Town, sliding can actually be used to clip out of bounds. Near the Lord of Games factory, hop down against this wall. Banjo should become stuck, sliding in place. When he does, try jumping and attacking, all while trying to move against the wall. When you get Banjo partway through the wall, move against the wall and jump. Banjo should pop right through and fall down into the water. Using this, you can explore wherever you want, just be careful to stay within the sections of water. Falling out of those result in Banjo being returned to whatever loading zone he last exited. If you're careful though, you can see some pretty neat sights. Over in the Banjo-Kazooie Museum level named Banjo-Land, the lanterns in the Glitter Gulch Mine area are very weird. These are not supposed to be moved, yet for some reason they're not actually locked down. Fly up to one with a vehicle equipped with a sticky ball gadget and grab onto the lantern. When you do, it'll just go crazy. Enjoy! During the Act 4 mission Spring Break, fly away from the objective over to Clinker. The moment you hit him in the eye with your wrench, the Xbox 360 will claim the disc is unreadable, crashing the game. If you're playing this on the Xbox One with Rare Replay, it'll also crash the game. I guess Clinker just has super sensitive eyes. During Act 6 of Banjo Land, there's a mission called Home Improvement Igloo Edition that tasks Banjo with demolishing Boggy's igloo. This can be relatively simple with the right vehicle, but it's possible to get a guaranteed TG trophy every time. Rather than touching the igloo, find one of the security cameras that's used in the Act 3 mission, Get Protected. When you activate it, the mission will be complete. This definitely shouldn't happen, but it sure is handy. Carrying an object using Kazooie's wrench can be very useful, but it's painfully slow. It's actually possible to change vehicles, and while the screen fades to white, press and hold the right trigger to pick up the object. When the screen comes back with Banjo in his vehicle, the object will continue to be held until you exit the vehicle. Something to note here is that while an object is being held using this glitch, it seems to be weightless, allowing you to drive or fly as fast as you'd like. Over in the Testo track, here are some neat glitches, but we'll start with the most useless of the bunch. If you try to detach a section of your vehicle using tow bars, any balloons will automatically deflate. That makes sense. 
any part of your vehicle no longer attached to the seat should be completely inert. If you press the inflate button, and then press and hold the tow bar button immediately after, the section should float away. That's not directly useful, but it's a good lead into an even better glitch that involves both tow bars and a detacher. With the right setup, it's possible to create what is basically a remote control car. First, here's it in action. Now the setup. First make something that can move, like this simple car. At the end of it, you need four tow bars like so. This bit acts as a stand for Banjo, whose seat is connected with a detacher. When you're ready to go, first attach, then hold RB and RT. Banjo's seat should magically become reattached, but the tow bar closest to Banjo will incorrectly remain unconnected. That means that the car part will still be controllable, which obviously shouldn't happen. If we left it there, it'd be a pretty neat glitch. But wait, there is more. If you add fuel, engines, and some wheels to banjo section, you can actually drive two different vehicles at the same time. Yeah, it's essentially nuts and bolts version of the hybrid Banjo-Kazooie glitch. Still, we'll take it one step further, and after performing the glitch, you'll be controlling three different vehicles at once. If you toss some wings on all those, you can take this madness into the air. This can be done at any level, and missions that allow you to choose your own vehicle. This might actually be useful, but probably not. Another really cool but useless glitch requires a bit of explanation. In this game, vehicles can only be a maximum of 19 blocks wide and 19 blocks long. There is no way around this while in Mumbo's motors, but out in the field, it's a different story. While playing, you can actually exit your vehicle and press B to enter a quick edit mode. This, as it turns out, is a bit glitchy. To show you what I mean, I put together this uh, vehicle, which has multiple sections. When you're ready to make the magic happen, carry the sections very far apart. The game considers these sections to be separate, and any blocks that become detached will return if repaired. If you take a block off one section, walk it over to a different section and attach it using the edit mode, when repaired the two sections will become one. That is how you bypass the 19 block limit. The creative builders out there can actually use this glitch to create huge complex things. I, however, just like admiring the absurdity of it all. Also, if you press Y at one end of the vehicle, Banjo will fly through the air all the way to the seat. Let's finish off with my favorite glitch of the lot. All you need is a grenade egg turret as your vehicle. That's it. Knock it over so it's laying on its side and hop in. Turn your aim so they're upside down, and if you jump out, you should be out of bounds. This, by itself, is a one-way trip to no man's land. But if you change vehicles while out of bounds, you can explore all you like. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a comment, let me know what you thought of the video. And if you want to see more videos from me, be sure to subscribe. I have a lot of stuff planned for 2018, so it should be interesting. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.
one step and then again let's do the mario all together now come on now 